say that one again. I mean, it's all tax write-ups from here. <laughs> well, we're back. Uh, dir the dirty Are boy we? is right again. It's time to clean up this wicked world. It's time to clean up, clean up capitalism. It's dirty, Rob. There's so much dirt on oh, capitalism. It's, it's dirty. Uh, but fortunately, we can just hose it down. Oh. Um, well. What? Well, what's loud? Welcome, everyone, to. Did some. There's more people watching today. <clears throat> Did something happen? To someone? Was there like a big video game? Uh, Did they announce like Bloodborne Power on Power Wash Fever is sweeping the nation. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Oh, they're, <laughs> they're about to do the fire station? We gotta get on it. <laughs> kids, kids, come quick. The Dirty Boys, they're, they're doing the fire station level. <laughs> quick, quick, say the thing, Rob. Um... Left. Yes, we we just um. If somehow you're watching this and you aren't aware, I can't imagine that is the case. But um, I mean, we still work at Vice, but we have been terminated. <laughs> um, we have jobs in the sense that we're here, but not in the sense that we'll continue to have them. <laughs> um. Uh, Vice is uh, going through as a company. I believe they call it a whole lot of shit. Um, I think is the, the the term I saw in the Wall Street Journal. Um, and uh, yeah. as a as a result of that, uh, we have been terminated. Waypoint has been terminated. Uh, we're we're alive and kicking for a couple more weeks. June second is the is the cutoff date. Um, but um, until then, you know. We're we're you're when you're here, you're family. Yeah, so we're here, and we're just. And I mean, we, we figured, uh, you know, today was probably not the day to be all focused in on uh, dead space while people people probably had some questions, and I just wanted to hear some thoughts, just hang, um, watch us uh, clean. Like the P Murpho three, Vice saw Rob's new monitor person said no way. It, I mean, it's true. Like Rob actually is the one that caused the the ship to sink. <laughs> it's like he tried to force through an expense in the internal system. <laughs> that was finally someone realized what's this waypoint thing. I'm not sure this makes sense for our business model. Who they've been here for six years? Why are they paying hey, pay too much money? <laughs> Market research suggests that you should write about fancy monitors. That's just appealing to a demographic that has their wallets and hearts open, frankly. Look, this is, I've always sort of felt like we were not, uh, we, we didn't lean hard enough into the novelty luxury goods, uh, like mm -hmm, coverage. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. here, like basically, mm -hmm. I always sort of felt like uh, Waypoint at its best, the ultimate version of it would have been what if they had podcasts when sharper image was huge <laughs> we're just we're just ordering out of the catalog yeah just like let's it's let's hey we'll screw you more stuff in the sharper image catalog uh so yeah What's so that, like um go ahead well yeah so i mean it's it, like for sure it's um it's. I think definitely there's a there's a bit of like process still happening, but I think the here here's the thing I will say. Um, it's been so bad for so long. Like I would say, like we're feeling really good heading in fall, right? Like I, like Waypoint Plus was feeling pretty stable. Uh, like it was all working out pretty well, and then like there was so much bad news like piling up around the company that our collective antennae began twitching. That like we we did mm -hmm. begin to get the feeling that like things were looking a bit shakier behind the scenes uh, than maybe we we would like, and so I think in a weird way this is like harder for the audience because like 
we've been making like little gallows humor jokes about this for a minute. But I think behind that, there has been a process of going from, ah, it'll probably be fine, to this might not be fine, and then eventually, like, where we were even coming into this week was, it seems really unlikely that things are going to be fine for much longer. Um, like, every week now, it begins to feel like we are cheating death. And so, I think in a weird way, like, this is, a, this is hard for the audience, because, like, we aren't going to communicate how seriously that we think the situation has gotten. Uh, and so, like, this comes out of the blue for y'all, but I think for us, it was a bit of uh, watching an asteroid, like, slowly hurtle toward your department. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, I think that, that is right. I, I am basically mentally preparing myself for, for this day for a while, um, while at the same time unable to really do the thing that I've done in the past, which is like, all right, well, if I think something really bad is hurtling toward me, well, I guess I'll start preparing for it. But Rob, everyone else in this industry is getting <laughs> asteroids thrown at them as well. Um, it's not its not as though it's like, well, just time to line up a couple of interviews and see, see how things go. Um... You would need places. Yeah, where are you going to run to? At. Yeah. Um. Like, uh, you know, I, j- just one way of explaining like the difference of things is, um, like previously when I have left jobs, there's like a handful of like editors that I've worked with in the past, and then, um, if I reach out to them when I was in a position to be changing jobs, you know. At least one of those would result in, like, like we should have a conversation. I've sent a bunch of those messages to people telling them my, uh, about what's going on with me, and literally none of them have resulted in a, let's have a conversation. It's just like, man, really sucks, doesn't it? And I'm like, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it does. You're right. It does suck. No, no, like, let's hop on the phone and see if we can find room in the budget. There's no, there's no room in the budget to be found. We're like Mary and Joseph, is what we we're saying. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Please, won't somebody take us in? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Unto us, a, a podcast is born. <laughs> uh, I do recommend people listen to the. Um... I swear, if any of you sickos do some weird mpreg shit, though, like I'm gonna like no, I'm gonna be right on your ass. Okay, well, people only—you only say things like that when you want people to do stuff. I mean, you—you've been—you've been on online long enough to know this. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hey guys, drummer pod, drummer boy, four twenty here. Uh, you'll never believe Just what's going on here. Zone. I'm at the I'm at the Ramada in Bethlehem, and it is going off. Um, people should listen to the to, to the podcast that just went out um, uh, not that long ago. We, you know, we found out what was happening. Well, eventually, after being told nothing was happening, and then finding out a lot was happening, um, you know, we were supposed to record a podcast. I played a lot of Jedi Survivor to talk about that game on a podcast, um, and we'll do that next week. We will, we'll, 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 we'll get back uh, to that spot. But um, you know, it was like, well, should we re- record something? People are going to have a lot of questions once we announce and it was like well let's see how the exit interviews go see how everyone feels um and so everyone had even though we are technically here for a couple more weeks we had uh, our exit interviews with the company um you know where you find about like benefits and paperwork and yada yada and we came out of that and was like do, do people feel like recording a podcast and it was like fuck yeah we feel like recording a podcast so literally Right out of our exit interviews with Vice HR, we recorded a podcast for Vice <laughs> that you can listen to. 
Well, and like something else I would stress is, and this is like a taste of how weird things are at this company. Um, like, I am pretty sure people had it on good authority from fairly high up that like we specifically would not be caught up in this layoff, that we would be okay, and then that mm-hmm. proved not to be true. And like it went shockingly high where this came as a surprise to folks, and like that is kind of the state. Like, usually I'm the first to say like oh, we got to take these vice execs and and get them up against the wall. But first of all, a lot of the execs who've been here for like years, who sort of like have steered the company into this position, they're not here. Uh, they like it's sort of been a steady like trickle of high level departures for the past few months, and like mm-hmm. you know now it's it, it's sort of like there are. There are still some, like, long-term vice people here, but, like, the decisions are not necessarily being made, uh, like, in their offices. And so I think that's, that's another part of, like, just the weirdness around this is, um, like, I think it was kind of a shock to a lot of people at Vice that, um, you know, they've been passed bad info, uh, you know, that, that, like, this could, this could happen, like, around them. Um, without their knowing, so I think that's a that that was another weird part of this. But honestly, that might have actually, you know, that may have actually worked out in our favor uh, because I think I'm not sure how many people who were like got termination notices yesterday. I don't know how many of them, like a lot, a lot of folks like had their access cut off and like they were done by the end of the day. But I don't think they were mm-hmm. told you're gonna be fine. Uh, and so I, I do think in a in a weird way, I think there was. Uh, some extra care and attention paid to us because, like, it had been pretty horribly mishandled um, in a way that, you know, even some even some fairly hard-hearted execs who've been been to this rodeo a few times uh, were kind of taken aback and um, you know tried to try to make this right. And some people really went to bat for us, and and so like you know. It, couldn't be I'm saved. pretty sure that's where that extra. Um, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where that extra yeah. month came from. I can't say that with any sort of guarantee, but like, I really feel like we were supposed to be done so uh, yesterday, and uh, instead we're we're getting kind of this this grace period, which is you know we're extremely fortunate. Uh, it gives us some time to kind of wrap up some work that we've been doing at the site. Um, it allows us, uh, you know, a chance to think about our futures and you know what exactly that's going to be um uh could do like a little more day drinking i mean like the possibilities are are true are truly endless like i'm just gonna open up this beer pull a real rob like what are they gonna do fire me i'm good to go full of what pull a rob drink on a stream Ah, okay. I see. You said pull a Rob, and I thought you said it was full of Rob. Oh, and I was well, like, "Ooh, is that like Three Floyds Robert the Bruce Skull Splitter Ale?" <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do we call it the Rob now? We call it the Rob. Why do I keep hitting E instead of R? I don't have to uh, pick up my children today, so uh, I'm I'm good to go. I can I can be unhinged. Man, how will I ever? How will I ever be able to tell when I clean this uh, this tar roof? This is this. Oh, wait, hang on, it's not a tar roof. I thought this was a tar roof. Y'all, look at this. Look at this. Look at the absolute state of this roof. I thought this was a tar roof. No, it's like a tiled roof. Uh, and so what I thought was tar was just muck and grime. Thank um, God the dirty boys are here. Ah. Uh. I, t- I told uh, you this, Rob, uh, privately in, a, in our HOA chat, um, but um, I we had a lot of hail recently out by me, yeah. and my roof is a little bit older, and so I was like, this is probably a good time to get it looked at, see if the hail damage would allow me to like qualify under my home, uh, in, you know, uh, homeowner's insurance to uh, get that bad boy replaced. And so, you know, sometimes there are places that will go around after a storm, like trying to see yeah. if they can connect with you. Um, and, and maybe those places are, are good or not. I always get a little leery of going with a place that knocks on my door, um, to be perfectly honest. Like, that's the first kind of service that I'm probably, even if I'm interested in what you're offering, I don't know that it's the, it's the cold the calling or salesperson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is maybe unfair, but it's definitely 
how I feel. Anyway, long story short, a, a cousin of mine got his roof replaced by uh, a place around uh, where I live a couple of years back. And he's like, I got good vibes from them. And they got managed to, you know, work it out with the insurance. And it all got replaced. And it's like, all right. So I, I called them up. And, you know, the person I got connected to is, you know, the, the owner of the company. And, I mean, he didn't say these exact words. But the vibe of the call was, we're going to find that fucking insurance company. You know, we're going to find their kneecaps. We're going to break them. And we're going to get your ass a new roof. And you're not going to pay jack shit unless you get your insurance to pay for that roof. And I was like, that's... That's the vibe I want. Come, come, come to my home, inspect it. Maybe, maybe bring a little ball peen hammer, make some, make some extra marks on that roof. Whatever you got to yeah. do, buddy. Um, and so they went on my roof with a yellow, well, not marker, but something, some sort of yellow. They made some, they made some marks. They're like, oh yeah, some real hail damage up there. We're gonna, we're gonna have to get the insurance company on this pronto. I'm like, all right. All right, all right, all right. But they had real hail damage, right? That's not like, eh, wink. There was some real no, hail damage no. up there. Yeah, no, like, it's all over one of my gutters. You can, like, just see these, like... Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it came down a couple, two weeks ago uh, to a degree that, um, like was concerning for the glass on like a couple of our windows. It's like that's extreme. That just sounds like someone is throwing baseballs at yeah, uh, yeah. at the window. Um, sadly, uh, the, the siding on our house is a very ugly color, and my wife is like, "But sure, it would be a shame if that hail fucked up our siding. We had to get that replaced too." Um, but I, I was I was unfortunately had to report to my wife that the siding was very durable. It did not show any signs of hail damage. Um, so the ugly uh, yellow color uh, on the side of the house remains. Hey, so it just occurred to me while I'm up here uh, on this roof. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're across the street from a corner diner and a little strip mall and then a food market. And then down the street, there's a little corner diner, what looks like a strip mall. And it looks like the identical building. Is this is this all just tiled out? Or are we just repeating the same the same like environment? Oh, interesting. Like does the whole world look like this? There's another diner. I mean this may just be storytelling. Um I I have I've had two different interviews that I've had set up, not job interviews like wait, you've already got interviews? interviews. No, no, I don't. I definitely do not. You got um, leads? You got leads, bro? You no, no, bro, bro, bro. You got leads, bro? Um, uh, but they they launched some new DLC for this game recently, and like the the writing in this game is pretty funny, and so like, hey, you know, is there someone I could talk to, you know, about the um the writing in this game? And they're like, sure, yeah, we'll we'll get back to you with, with something that makes sense and. Um, and I was also supposed to interview um, the uh, some of the folks behind the new Amnesia game that comes out in a couple of weeks. And I like got these like sad follow up emails. They were like, "So we like totally understand if you don't want to do the interview anymore. Like you just let us know." And I was like, "Thanks. I'll, I'll let you know if they still make sense." I couldn't possibly confront a power wash interview uh, at times like this. <laughs> Uh, some people asking about um, if there's been an uh, is going to be an archiving um, effort. My understanding is uh, folks in the Discord are actually already have something underway to try and preserve um, some of the work. I, I'm not familiar yeah. with the details. Rob, I don't think Vice is going to like or... delete everything overnight, but I'm also not like you know it's a company. I don't I don't trust them to keep everything around forever. No, no. Um, Yeah, but the like the podcast somewhere and, the, and, the, and paid for storage. Um. Yeah. Um. 
Um, and yeah, and if just... you look in the chat, uh, why, why always uh, has uh, the, the deets on uh, how to get access to the Discord if um, if you are looking uh, to do that. Sorry, Rob, you, you were going to say something. Shout out to Mo. Uh, oh, also, uh, kind of people are asking, how, how do people get to the store right now? Because, like, I know the the URL URL is down, but the store is still up, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Waypoint Jack. Uh, we're asking, um, yeah, we're still getting paid. Like this is this is why like our end date is when we stop getting paid. Uh, but yeah, this is the nice thing is like we are fully employed for one more month, um, so we have time to plan for this change in circumstances. Um, you could play some system shock, right? I could. We. I bet we could finish. You know what? I bet we could finish system shock one and two. <laughs> <laughs> just like the master plan. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Just like as laid out in the document. Yeah. Kind of do we, do we, we probably got to do at least one more King's Field stream, right? At least one more. Like a big boy all-day stream, see how far we can get in King's Field. I still think that idea is a banger. Like, I am genuine. Uh, like, genuinely, I would be delighted if every morning, like, I got a little notification that like Waypoint is hosting uh, you streaming Final Fantasy Tactics at like nine in the morning. Go with God. Oh, I don't think people could hear me. Hi, y'all. Oh, at all? Ever? <laughs> Wait, this entire time? Oh my god. I th I think oh this... my god. You know what? Look, look, I moved in case y'all didn't follow my Twitter over the past weekend, my the GPU on my stream on my personal computer, which was the computer that I streamed us off of, it was our home base. The GPU died over the weekend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, hold on, I can get you a six nut. It was like my best loaf in years. Oh, that's the wrong one. God damn it. <laughs> I had to move VMAX. <laughs> I had to move everything. All the files. So I, I was with like a dying questions GPU. It's just like dead air was occurring, making me look like a huge <laughs> dumbass. I Wait, this entire I'm time sorry. this entire time we were talking to, to, to muted kata. Yeah, yeah. yeah that is yeah. entire exchange. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't outputting to the master. I was outputting to y'all. Y'all obviously could hear me, which is part of why right. we m missed that. It wasn't going to the the full master. Um, but, you know, I had this all, I had this shit figured out on my other computer. It's just these small quirks of like, oh, right, the first time you do that, you just have to f remember to hit this one button, and then it's done. Sorry, it's done. Were, you, were you monitoring the stream audio through, like, the fan of your GPU? Like, no, I'm, so the I'm way that curious this... where that comes into it. <laughs> the, the way that this works is that I get... Because I don't want to be able to hear my own voice, because it's delayed just enough that it's really Right, because you get that, like, jamming effect where you can't speak through your echo if it's, yes. like, perfectly timed. So I yeah. have everything else piped through me through a secondary bus that is everything else going to the master except my voice. And so if my voice is the thing missing from the master, I can't tell. And usually it's fine. Like I've, I've set it up so that it just works. But every oh once in God. a while oh, I, hit a, I hit a button that I forget to hit. Overseas sexy guy. Great username. There would be moments... Of dead silence, just the sounds of pressure washers. I thought you guys were just sad, 
But I guess Kato <laughs> was talking during those moments, and there, only Rob and there, Patrick could hear. There were one or two gaps of of just power washing in in, in I, silence. Kato, I'm but... watching this vod and be like, <laughs> "How? One or two gaps? Define gap." Yeah, I don't. I, Kato, more than, I don't, more than you, five seconds. When five you've seconds. told us, when you've tried to explain away things in the past. <laughs> I don't, I don't buy what you're saying for a fucking second. I, we made it seem like Rob and I were like, a, like on the verge of tears multiple times. The way this sounds. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, <laughs> just too sad to speak. Just staring just kind of, vacantly well, at power washer. You're, pa- you're power washing. Sometimes you gotta focus on the on the task at hand. It's the chattiest game we play, Kata. <laughs> Waypoint Plus subs can get access to Kato's voice on the streams. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> no, I mean, what, uh, what, uh, what, I don't... Maybe we'll end up doing, like, a small, uh, like, thank you pod that will go on the Plus feed exclusively as sort of a send-off, but I would say, broadly speaking, like, whatever we publish going forward in audio form will just go on the main feed um like both like because people really shouldn't be signing up for the plus sub at the moment anyway and like don't want to accidentally take people's money i mean you um, definitely shouldn't like be subscribed up through like you know by the end of may you want to cut that off yeah right 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 um I, I, I don't know. Vice, I, like, I don't know. Vice is gonna be like, why? Is, why are we just hemorrhaging money and refunds and subscribers that your last month here? How are you costing us more money now that we've let you go? I'm not sure. I want to explain that part, but you know, do what your heart says. Because also, we can't tell you like, give every ounce of just keep giving money to that company that's letting us go. Um, and then for po- folks like things like refunds and stuff like that, we are we are we are looking into what is within our power to do right by all of you. Um, but that's going to take a little time to uh, untangle um, as we figure out what we are and aren't capable of doing. This is a good question. People were asking Kato, we should probably, I don't know how you would want to handle this, but just start taking all the plus content and putting it on the main feed so that yeah, like there's no reason for it to be locked away anymore. Um, no. What we could do is make the plus feed public too. Mm, mm. I mean, like you know, a lot of our podcasts, except for Manhunting, have been timed exclusive. So right. yeah. there's not a ton that's actually. Uh, yeah, we don't hide a lot. Only on that feed. No, it's yeah, it's mostly Manhunting. Sports ends up over there. My turn ends up over there. Wow, I, I, is there any way you can finish manhunting, Rob? Can you close the loop well, on that Well, I've got more project? time to watch Luck. I've got more time to watch <laughs> uh, his David David uh, Milch uh, collaboration. Uh, the, the one where they killed all those horses. David Milch is on the record saying the horse murder was overstated. Uh, I, oh, yeah, I bet it I was. I believe him. Isn't that why that show got canceled? Uh... I think it was. I don't think it was a good shoot. I think there were a lot of complicating factors, but uh, they, they. I mean, they had some bad luck with their horses for sure. Bad luck. Interesting. I've bad seen luck. multiple people now mention the fact that they unsubbed months ago and still had access to the fucking plus feed. A thing that I I thought we fixed. Great. We didn't fix that. I mean, cool. I was told it was fixed by the uh-huh. by the people who run our RSS feed. That's mm-hmm, very mm-hmm, funny mm-hmm, to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, who cares now? Go yeah, no, it doesn't matter, really. Enjoy your podcast. Ultimately, I don't think anyone was doing that on purpose, right? It was always an accident. I was just like, ah, I can't afford it anymore. But wait, I'm still listening. Man, I might need to get some multi-purpose cleaner. I figure, what's the store button in this game? <laughs> I don't know. You're the one that holds all the... You have all the money. Yes? I'm store? playing on your save. 
Is it a WASD game? <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Hold on. Alright, that's nuts. But, okay, but where's the store? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Much like Waypoint <laughs> Store. Bloody stapler. Hey, what am I supposed to do with my 150k channel points? Oh, I won betting on overall. The store is in the. Oh, that's the. There we we should. Yeah, we'll yeah, have to have. Store. We'll have to do some sort of stream that is all bets. Yeah. Maybe we can finally oh. do that Dude Perfect collaboration. Oh my god. <laughs> How far? Patrick, are... did you see Dude Perfect at uh, at the draft? I did. It was incredible. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, people are saying I think I bought a mug from the store. Yeah, we put the mug back up. Um, There's many mugs now. Who knows, by oh, yeah, the end of the week you... there might be another mug. Yeah, you uh, you put live a mug we didn't even... We had sketched out, but not actually set live. Map mug. Map mug. Is this not... How do I activate the fucking... I need the thing. Uh, Funk Desi, thoughts on the Bears' number, first pick? Uh, I You know what? The Bears are an organization that can't just be normal. Um, and so to just draft a highly regarded offensive tackle... And in the process, like, pick up an extra fourth-round pick by trading one spot with the Eagles so that they can take Jalen Carter and see if that is going to be a workable situation uh, is fantastic. Like, let my man Justin Fields cook. Who cares if we give up 40 points a game? Does it, doesn't matter to me. I want to score 40 points. I forget. Do I? Okay. Is it this one? Am I, am I using the Prime Vista 3000? Oh, somebody... Yeah, apparently and, somebody okay. bought waypointgeneralstore.com With the J? With the J. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's amazing. That's good. What's the difference That's a good between joke. two? Eh, fuck it. Yeah, there we go. Um, you know, these number of people asking, like, like what happens after June second? And it's like that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. Um, well, we get you know, in terms of like, yes. Uh, well, but I think they mean in terms of like, would you? All of you consider doing something together. And, you know, like, I got a family. Like, you know, I, I don't, you know, it's one of those things where it is it is not as easy to just say, uh, hey, go on, on Patreon. We appreciate uh, the zeal that, uh, that people have um, for the stuff that we've done. And um, certainly we would all like to keep doing stuff together. But in terms of just being able to kind of plop this, somewhere else um you know i don't know that it's as as easy as as that unfortunately but it's also early we we're still processing <laughs> literally the part about losing our jobs and so um you know a lot of that will just depend on how everyone feels uh and how things go over the over the next month and change but you know we'll obviously think... share details as we get a sense of it it's the other thing I'd add is the so what we did at Waypoint took up a, a fair bit of time. It was a full time job uh, doing doing Waypoint. There's there's a lot of stuff we were up to, and I'm pretty confident we could like get about like on paper what we made in salary through like something like Patreon. But you know, it's like the difference between. Uh, self-employment income and like being at a company right it's like mm -hmm. if you like if you look at the paycheck that we got from vice there's what we took home and then there's like all the benefits that came with that like uh i think i'm like for me i think i paid like a hundred some dollars a month for really good insurance and then you look at the other side of that and like what did vice pay quite a bit more and so <laughs> yeah. that's like one of these things where uh if we like 
we would not be being responsible uh, if we were like booked up doing waypoint stuff and couldn't find like those permanent positions that would supply the uh, the stuff that makes it a little easier and safer. <laughs> Uh, for, well, like for, for for k matching, you know, all all you know, all stuff like that is, you know, uh, that's going to be difficult to get in in that kind of environment. Let me tell you, working at large company is not why I had a tax settlement that took me like four years to pay off. Let me just tell you that right now. <laughs> You're like, it's like, oh my god, like. We're spending so much money right now. Well, there's a lot of money that uh, I've never been able to touch for a while. But now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this brief window of being right with the Lord. One window opens and then a big one closes, Rob. That's just how huge, life works. absolutely huge. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's the thing, I wish, uh, I, I believe they passed the law with the, the intent that it would be easier to just go out and be like, I will go to the insurance marketplace and buy myself some good insurance. Uh, and let me tell you what is not, like, offered uh, that much on the insurance marketplace is the actual good insurance. Um, hasn't hasn't quite worked out that way, I don't, I don't, I don't think. Um, so it's like... You know, it's there's a lot to consider, um, but the 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 idea that it would be sort of a smooth one to one thing is is kind of not in the cards. I wasn't I wasn't talking. That was just a moment of contemplation. Does that will that rust come off? Is it required? Yes, yeah, it will. Holy like shit! A... Hang on, I need a de-ruster. Oh, that makes shit. sense. I'm sorry, I. I think that's a thing. I think that's... No, that's not right. Metal cleaner? Yes. Alright, how do I change what is in the... Uh... There we go. Oh, did you buy yourself some cleaner? I bought us metal cleaner, Patrick, so we could do a better <laughs> job. <laughs> is that rust? What is that? Yeah, that's rust. It's, it's rusted out. It looks uh, like a fucking cordyceps. MC Benji, but Rob... Did you know that if you make less than a certain amount, you can get tax credits to bring that $500 plan down to $200 plan? You just got to live in poverty. I mean, that's, buddy. you know. Buddy, I was on that shit once. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. It was great. I paid $40 a month for, hey, you almost died insurance. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love to almost die. Real life power washing on so, TikTok. We're pivoting to TikTok now. Mm hmm. Just in time for it to get banned. <laughs> Thanks, Marco Rubio. Uh, we were asking, like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, like, well, what can we do right now? Like, how can we, how can we help the, the Waypoint team? Well, I mean, like, I don't know what help we need yet. You know, like, I, I don't know. Like, it's, like, right now we are. Figuring things out and contemplating next steps and seeing what, like, this is a crossroads moment. Um, and for the moment, we've still like we're, we still got jobs. We got like a little bit of runway to figure some stuff out. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the I think the, that's the other thing is I think I, I certainly had to be wary about this myself, which is. Um, 
to a degree, you're incentivized to rush into things in a situation like this because, like, you're going to have a lot of wind at your back. You're going to be like, "How can we help the team?" We want like you're very much, you were definitely incentivized mm-hmm. to uh, like. All right, we're announcing our new startup. There's a lot of there's a lot of arguments in favor of doing something like that. I think it's a good impulse. I think it's a lot. It makes a lot of sense for for why people would do that. Um, but the other thing is like. I don't know, the, the awkward thing is, like, the right time to make a decision like this, to, like, figure out what's next, is probably, like, not the day after uh, you all find out you're being fired. But the weird thing is, like, the most interest and, like, energy there is around you is, like, the minute after you've been fired. Um, and mm-hmm. so, like, they're, like, you're gonna, like, I would, you know, uh, there's, it would be great for you all to, like, come here and be like, but we figured out, like, nothing's gonna change. And, like, you know, you can help make it happen by, you know, following us to Patreon or whatever. And the thing is, like, things, like, for, for the reasons we've outlined, things do have to change. So uh, the the awkward thing is, like, when, as we all sort of figure out, like, okay, well, now it's the future. Like, what is next? What's the path moving forward? Um, you know, there's a little bit of trepidation about, like, well, will that goodwill, will that interest still be there? Um, like, not calling one out here. This is just the, the nature of things. Like, uh, I don't know how many people are watching this, uh, but like, yeah, more interest than usual, uh, certainly, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when yeah. you're in the heat of these things. Uh, and that, that I think, can capitalizing on that energy, I think there's reasons to do it, but I think there's also hazards to that. Yeah, I think we're, you know, going to try and take advantage of the fact that we've been given this extra time to use that time to, to think. Um, through all sort of stuff like that, both, like, not just on a collective basis and in terms of, like, what it's meant for us to work together, but just individually. It's like, what, what do you want to... What do you want to do? Um, you know, I... But, you know, we talk about this a bit, like, on the podcast, but it's like, I don't know, does everyone want to still be in media and, like, go through this cycle again, uh, inevitably? Like, I, you know... I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Even if you wanted to, are there jobs that would let you do that? Um, or, you know, do we start, like, following the path that a lot of people who have been in our position before do, which is, you know, you end up working behind the scenes in games, you know, working in communications, or uh, you know, like, I have several friends that used to be games writers that, you know, like, work at Microsoft and write for the, the thing they call Xbox Wire, which is basically pretty safe articles about games that are in development. So you're like using the same skills. You're like talking to developers, packaging something that says something about their game, but you know, obviously in the safest possible fashion because it's being published on an official platform holders uh, website. Uh, Qtoria, if you're new in the industry, where do you even try to get in at this point? Uh, it feels like everything is burning or in ashes. I mean, like if writing about games is is, is pretty difficult. Um, it always has been, but it's it's never been more precarious. And and what also makes that challenging is that it comes alongside shifts in audience, right? So it's not strictly that media companies are a kind of precarious business endeavor um, to begin with and kind of always have been. Uh, But, you know, like younger generations aren't... If they're experiencing criticism or or kinds of criticism, like it's not necessarily happening on a website in 800 to 1,000 words. Like it's happening on video essays and and things like that. Um, Which is fine. Like the form can change um that is you know even in my short you know my you know 20 plus years doing this i didn't go to school or to think i was going to do podcasting i mean that wasn't a thing when i got started um that is just a a form that emerged during during my career and same with the uh um you know literally what we're doing now streaming oh thank you for the, the raid jeff gersman I have a master's in art. Yeah? How's that working out? (laughs) 
Well, okay, Great, this, honestly. This is the thing, though. Cut, Great. Like, the, <laughs> this is the... Okay. Like, higher education degrees are not vocational degrees. It's not like I need... No, I'm sorry, no, I need no. to go get my bachelor's license of doing art. I need to get my <laughs> bachelor's license. I should have gotten my bachelor's license to do uh, business. Like, the... There's a lot of people who hate higher education uh, and, like, do like do think it should be vaca- vocational school. But I do think sometimes we also... You come out of school and you're like, I want to find work in this field I care about. And sometimes I think that, like, can cause you to miss that in your in your experience, like, l- like doing something you're passionate about and, uh, like, like, studying it deeply and learning to think critically about it, you picked up a lot of other skills that, like, translate smoothly to other jobs. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do, like, I, I totally get, like, on the one hand, the art degree is, is a tough sell, but, like, like, let me tell you, there's probably a lot of unemployed communications majors out there, too. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's just kind of bad for everyone right now. But it's just like, yeah. Did never, never imagine that this is where I would be. Especially during, during well, those, those times in grad school. <laughs> you know, I mean, I got a degree in... When I went to school, the, the, for journalism, it was print journalism or broadcast journalism, right? It's mm-hmm. like be in front of a camera or like, you know, writing were the, the two options. There was no, you know, nothing related to websites or anything like that because, you know, that stuff takes a while to kind of catch up at the at, at the education level. But, I mean, I only get picked, I only did a journalism degree because I was like, well, I was already writing. I was hoping to turn that into a thing and it was a much more uh, viable path. When I was when I was in school, but I just got the journalism degree because uh, it was going to be easy for me to get <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I was already started doing stuff like that. But also, journalism degrees are functionally useless. Like they don't they don't get you anything. They don't. Like, yeah, they don't make you, you can, any more employable as a journalist. Only if you go to like maybe Missouri, right? Like there's a couple of like journalism ass schools like, um, that like may, Columbia, maybe, Ball State. Right, but even then, that's probably more of a networking thing than it is um, anything yeah. else. So it's like I got a journalism degree because it was easy for me to pass those classes and get rip roaring drunk, um, and that was that was my college experience. Like at no point have I ever gotten any job because I had that I had that degree. Yeah, I mean that's. You you get into art kind of knowing that, right? Like, right from right. high school, it's been like, well, that's not gonna do anything. It's like, no, the point of going is the the study itself will be in, enriching, right? Which is not really, you know, doable for a lot of people. Just if it's just going to be enriching, right? The state of like, well, yeah, especially given education. how much it costs now. Yeah, like right. it is fucking wild, and because you know, I. Uh, they have these things now called five two nines, which are like um, savings accounts. Basically, not like you're stocking away money for your kids' education, and you, there are like tax incentives to to do it through a five two nine as opposed to like just putting it in like a savings account that can't be opened for eighteen years or whatever. And so we calculated with our financial advisor, like, do you want to help your kids with their education? Like, is that something you want to do with the money you do have? And I was like, yes, and. Uh, that we calculated how much it would be to go to like University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. That's the school, the state school that I went to, um, and we like mapped that out for the two kids and how much you'd have to put away monthly in order to pay for all that. And it was just like, I, how much would it cost to pay half of their school? And like that's <laughs> instead what we targeted because like schools like quadrupled yeah. since I was in in there. Like it is yeah. fucking in like wild how much it costs. To, to go to a state school, like, it's a state school, you're in state, it's the in-state tuition, and I, it's like, it's just absolutely uh, out, outrageous, so I, I had to settle for, you know, hopefully paying for, for half of my kids' education, so at least slightly, and maybe I'll get older, and then I can increase, you know, you make more money, you can, I say that as I'm losing my job, uh, make more money in theory, and then, like, increase the amount of money you're putting away into uh, to those things, but... This is all to say, the the cost of schooling these days. Why, 
that's only going to push you further towards getting something that's applicable to a job because if yeah. you're going to go into a wild amount of debt like why would I learn about art history um, and that's unfortunate yeah yeah for a second there um, <laughs> what's up with what's up with fucking uh, school debt anyways what the fuck happened with that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm, just—is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it I actually going to happen? The court case about it went well, though. I think the court case okay. like, was like, "Yeah, they can do that." <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know where all God. this is at. It would finish off. It would finish off my what I what I have left. So that'd be oh, safe, hell yeah. honestly. <laughs> right. This is that's that's the last I had heard was that it was held up, but not that anything had actually moved. I mean, it's going to go Ugh. to the Supreme Court, though, and it's never going to survive the Supreme Court. God. No, but I thought it just did. I mean, like, not I Supreme thought, I thought a ruling came down. And, like, no, I, I don't like, think I... that's true. I'm, I'm Jack can correct us, but I, 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 don't think, I don't think it went that high yet. Kind of, have you thought about just, like, not paying it back? Just, like... Yeah. No. Just, like, I'm no. I'm good. He needs credit anyways. It's not like I'm ever going to buy a house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the fucked up thing is that people look at your credits just to fucking rent, so... Yeah, that's true. Real fun system we got here. Can you borrow money good? Well, then you can pay me to live. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Whoa, you prestige like five times of borrowing money and paying it back. <laughs> but I don't know, I think there's there's a whole there's a whole lot of value, I think just like this is not saying that like this experience only comes from going to get a degree, but I think there's a ton of value that comes from going to a place to, like, learn to think rigorously and deeply about, like, challenging topics and then discuss them, uh, like, thoughtfully and responsibly with other people who are also, like, learners themselves. Um, and mm -hmm. to be able, like, I think there's, I think there's value, value in that. Like, if I say, like, well, why have I had any kind of career at all? It is, it is that stuff, like, you know, there, there's never been a moment where it's like, thank God I have that degree in classics. You know, every day I just put it to use uh, in a new way. Uh, the, the classics part of it is not, right? But, like, the skills I picked up doing that and, like, the skills I picked up, like, you know, in seminars and doing things, like, that's what you take with you. And so I think that's the, that's the sort of thing where it's like... Yeah, you know, whenever I sort of hear the, the notion of, like, well, you should get, like, a real degree that, like, you know gets you a real career. It's like, I've, I've done all right, uh, you know, on, on balance. And frankly, I've, I've met a lot of people who have those more, like, bankable degrees, and uh, I've not been impressed. Yeah. Do I think I could have run Vice better than a lot of folks? Yeah, of course. I, I, I think uh, that would have been very easy. There's a whole other building we have to do. Yeah, no, but and that one's really uh, fucked because it's one of those uh, fire training uh, like mm -hmm, buildings. So that mm -hmm, one's just gonna be sooty as mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. Well, I gotta go answer my front door. I'll be right back. Kato, you talk. You talk a lot. Start talking, Kato. Okay, fine. Hi Rob, how's how's it going? Hi chat, how's it going? <laughs> this roof is filthy, filthy. It's just it's gross it's up here. Filthy. But I'm starting to filthy, filthy, filthy. Uh, but it, we're starting to make real progress. That's great. Is that a pool? No, what's up that ladder? Is that just the? No, but it is like a pool ladder. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe like... this is a reused asset from like the suburbs. Why can't I get up this fucking ladder? There you no, go. it's just like more roof. Gross. Oh man, there's just nothing but yeah. It's like different <laughs> levels of caked on crud every everywhere you go. It's looking pretty. People can still though. hear Kato, right? 
I'm yeah, not just talking yeah. to myself. Yeah. <laughs> CS games don't do too many mech coding classes. Oh, yeah. So, like, I thought I would get into games through the, like, dev side when I was in high school. And I was still trying to figure things out before I decided on art school. Uh, took one computer science class. Got out immediately. <laughs> Have you ever tried to code anything, Rob? Uh, enough to learn, the, like, to find out I did not enjoy that skill, like, doing that work. Yeah. It's fucked up, because I can, you know... Well, and then, me... then I would hear people tell me, like, well, hang on, though. Like, you know, doing translation work of, like, dead languages especially is yeah. a lot, like... There's a lot of, like, commonality between, like, checking and, like, constructing code. And I'm like, sure, <laughs> but that is, like, still a different language. And also, uh, that wasn't the stuff I found the most fun anyway. Yeah. Um, and, like, just multiply that by a thousand with uh, actual, like, you know, l learning basic all those years ago where I was like, it takes how much work to make, like, a title card appear and to yeah. create a menu? Fuck that. Oh, my God. Basic. Oh, what was I? I was I learned like JavaScript, and uh, very early C plus or something. Very beginner rather C plus, and then, like it's fucked up because I feel like I could I can play certain programming games like forever, even like something yeah. that where you're writing in like a fake language. And I don't know what it is, but doing it in real life, like I don't know, I I did I did end up doing more coding in life later, uh, actually for my my thesis project for uh, for grad school uh, was a big installation that required required me to code in three different languages for some reason because I didn't know how to make all of these disparate things talk to each other in any way that made sense. Uh. And that wasn't horrible, but I feel like the amount of loving to code that you have to be to be an engineer and have and have it not drive you crazy is kind of like not a thing I could ever achieve. Yeah, well, and that's also the thing, like, how many people who are working in game dev are actually programmers, right? Like, um... No, right. Like... And same with, like, you Engineers know, like, are one thing versus, like, you know, producers, writers, artists, etc. Like, it's it's a big piece of the pie, but it's not not the whole well, pie. Well, I'm not sure that engineering works in a way where it's like we got platoons of engineers that we just throw at different problems because, like, right. it's one of those things where there's kind of a architecture and a logic that has to be followed for a lot of the jobs that you can do. Right, as like as a software engineer, where it's not like, oh, if we put, if we put twenty people on this engineering task, it go twenty times as fast. Yeah, yeah, that's it's all kind of single threaded in that way. <laughs> how, about, how many cores do you have in that new new computer? By the way, you never really talked to like deep specs of your build. Uh. Well, like, like CUDA cores? So many CUDA <laughs> cores. Ooh, it's like a whole school of Barracudas in there. Um, <laughs> Hold on. Do you have, you, what, what, which, which, yeah, which NVIDIA card did you get then? No, it's the 4090. 4090, okay. So it does have CUDA cores. Yeah. <laughs> um, and... It's the Intel, uh, like, i9-13900, uh, K, I I think. Um, okay. And that has a lot of cores, is what I would say. Like, a lot, like, a lot. 16 cores, says Ipyrus in the chat. I, I knew someone would just I know off the top I, of their head. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it might That's be more than nice that. That's very nice cores. Yeah, it's, it's got some folks saying, like, 24. It's, it's many. Are we? Are we? So hang on. Has the revolution happened now that people are like properly using multi-threading? Because like multi-core like processing came out when I was like in college. Like this has been around yeah. for twenty years. Yeah. But then the the barrier to that was always no, nobody's going to code anything. Like 
as long as there's a probability that there's a single core system that this program is running on, ain't nobody going to use multiple cores uh, for a lot of, like, consumer-facing applications. And so, like, the extra core has never did quite as much as you think. We've finally broken out of that world where, like, people are using them cores to, like, get the efficiency. Uh, Aerosol in the chat says... Jedi Survivor works out better on PC if you disable disable your multi-threading, so no. I mean, it exists. I do think it's still relatively new on the consumer grade level stuff. Like, I think you need... Correct me if I'm wrong, Chad. Do you need uh, Windows 11 to run stuff? Like, 10 just doesn't do it? Like, even then? Even then it was too early? <coughs> no. All right, so people are people are basically like multi-threading sucks, and like it's just always going to be. Uh, wow. Nobody's going to be like, and we will unleash all twenty-four of these cores upon this video game. Yeah. Little text message from one of our characters here, Leonard Miller. Doc, is Leonard Cal's dad? When can you come around? I've got something filthy, dirty for you. Ooh. Don't let me alone Tell me more. With Leonard Calstab. You still need one manager thread to handle all the others, which then is the bottleneck. The management class comes for us yet again. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. To multi-thread anything, you have to know that any thread can basically lock out the other threads from using a resource. So that seems, yeah, that seems like there's a lot of ways now you could actually, like, basically put stoplights up for other parts of your program that you don't want put up there. Was... Is multi-core process? I mean, what was the what was the special deal with the PlayStation 3's architecture? Was that just like multi the like cell. multi-core? Or was there something else? That was the, the cell that was cell. That was yeah. What's up with cell uh, processing? Well, it's funny because I mean it's easy to you know these days the differences between like a PlayStation and Xbox of a multi-platform game is is not non-existent, but not what it, it used to be. Um, I mean, for the first couple of years, like multi-platform games on the PS3 and 360, like, the PS3 versions were not quite unplayable, but they were fucking awful. And then there was a period where developers kind of figured out how to how to use the cell processor to at least um, like manage decent multi-platform games. And I so then Sony was leaning on publishers to send PS3 versions of multi-platform games to outlets who were reviewing right. games because nobody was requesting the PS3 versions because they didn't want to play them because they tended to be much worse. And I remember one of the first times that happened was it was clear that Sony was leaning on EA because you just weren't getting a choice. You weren't being asked, like, which version of the game you would want? Just like the PS3 version of Dead Space would show up. And thankfully it ran fine, but... Um, it was like clearly like Sony wanted to uh, you know break up the 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 narrative that people had were just broadly avoiding multi platform games on on the platform. Man, I remember when Dead Space came out? We were like, this is gonna be a pretty good year. <laughs> I mean, Dead Space was still pretty good. It was not Dead Space's fault. No, Dead Space wasn't running a media company. Uh, we will. We were supposed to play Dead Space today, and then Dead Space requires like a decent amount of concentration, and we wanted to be able to like chat and answer questions. So we thought we'll bring back the Dirty Boys for for another round, and then um, hopefully next week we'll um, uh, actually finish uh, Dead Space. It's definitely definitely still on the agenda. Like System Shock too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Final mm -hmm. Fantasy Tactics. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Michael Mann's All luck. these things. Michael Mann's luck. Well, man, if we think of, like, if, you know, ah, uh, no. Hmm? I don't think, uh, the 4K of Black Hat is not going to be out by June, is it? <laughs> Does it need, do you need a 4K? Okay, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah who, who are you talking I to? I know who of? I'm talking to. I just like to, you know, give a little check. Hey, really mm -hmm. search it deep in your soul, Rob. Can you make the content without the 4K? No, because I can't <laughs> truly appreciate uh, the master's vision. That's fair. That's fair. You don't want to. You know, you want. You don't want to do wrong. By no, old Mikey. No. Um. Do you still get Twitch Prime? Gundado on? never really did. No. It went somewhere. Uh, Gundado. <laughs> yeah. Who knows. Uh, Gandata, since, uh, you obviously had other stuff going on. What? The, sorry, that, that, that thing. The trailer that I totally um, missed yesterday. Oh yeah, the Armored Core trailer. Uh, what, what did you, what did you make of it, Kato? Looks fucking sick. Um, uh, I love that some, yeah, some, something, cool. I'm not sure who they're calling Altered Human. I really want it to, to be that they're calling, the suits are just Altered Humans, and that's the sort mm -hmm. of fucked up feature that we're in. Uh, it's definitely hard to tell, like, I know that, uh, Miyazaki has said specifically that they are not full-on soulsing, uh, Armored Core, that this is going to be a Armored Core ass game, and yeah. yet I find it hard to believe that there won't be some decent amount of Souls stuff kind of rubbing off on it. I just don't know. It's no, Nothing in that trailer made it clear how that may or may uh, may not be happening. Sure, and, you know, it, was, it was a very stylish cinematic trailer as opposed to, you know, like showing you the UI and moment-to-moment uh, -moment combat, but even if there is some of that influence in the game, it certainly seems like, broadly speaking, it is a it's an armored core game. Yeah. It definitely uh, like they didn't make me they, they didn't make Mecha Souls. No, no. As cool as sick as that game would be. <laughs> yeah, but I mean I do think there's a very specific thing that armored core means and Yeah. They're gonna do right by their by their fan base there because it looks like the most armored core has armored core thing I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I um, I really I, I want to play four before this one comes out. We have some time, yeah, right? It's too. like August. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got some time. Well. <laughs> so is this whole top done? Uh, looks like. I guess we just got to tackle the uh, training building. Annika. <laughs> Nate, literally, any idea what Waypoint's E3 coverage will look like this year? That's very good. <laughs> That's very good. Damn. What do Waypoint and E3 have in common? They ain't happening anymore. Beautiful. Beautiful, Rob. <laughs> jo uh, the uh, John Mulaney happy birthday uh, <laughs> bit. I know, I know what an H looks like. I know, how many, I know how much space I need. Do you think the gods punish us for our hubris in mocking the many deaths of E3? Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You did manage Probably to not. write the headline for a post that generated a ton of traffic for 
a podcast article. Based Weeks on... after the fact. Yeah. Date will days, but yeah. Which one? Uh, E3 found dead in Los Angeles. <laughs> I mean, it, it I was think, doing like the 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 news yeah, box, like, the numbers. Shit, like thought that like the found dead thing actually meant that like someone someone really was found had, dead had died. Oh my god! Yeah, and so they were like, "Oh man, people got to know about like uh, you know fans mourn Damn. as the news of E 3s passing uh, broke, and instead it's just a shit post." Damn, you're on like that next level shit. You're on that like SEO 2.0 shit. We're we're going past the SEO. We're going straight to the bots. <laughs> they're you know they're they're releasing me at the top of my game. I feel like I need another little cleaner here. Let yourself have one. Uh, stone cleaner, right? That's like brick is stone. I mean, by the game's definition, probably. Um, Frag Arcus, so no 24 hour final stream to send off Waypoint. I mean, we will do a big Waypoint send off something or other whether it's on the final day or or not i don't I, I you know is june 2nd a friday yeah what is june 2nd yeah it's a friday theoretically we uh, be uh it's right before games fast yes oh my god yes. yeah the event we were supposed to go to do i have to give those tickets back don't worry, I've got a Saturday uh, hands-on appointment with Sega booked for Saturday at 2. <laughs> well, those people just let you Probably. in if you show up. <laughs> I mean, if I... If we were there, then yes, they'd be, I'm sure it'd be fine. It's, it's, it's yeah, more it's getting, that, uh, it's getting there, yeah. We will be unemployed there. by the time... Yeah. Yeah, like, I can... I can send a text message to Jeff Keeley, and I'm sure he'll be like, "Yeah, man, it's cool. You can still come, but <laughs> I'd have to get to L.A. first. R.K. and Magi. Hey, what's the deal with the vods and the YouTube channel? No, there's currently an effort to uh, archive that stuff. In the Discord, uh, as far as yeah, when, when it's going to turn on or off, who could say? I I don't. Yeah, there is no it's nothing like, that has been suggested to us that it's like going to be purged. It's more like things right. will get ignored exactly because they are no longer a priority at the company, and we're not there to advocate for it. So it's like yeah, if something breaks, there's no one, no one's going to care to fix it, and so um, it's less that I think. On June second, there's going to be this malicious attempt to purge Waypoint from uh, Vice's internal database. As much as it's just like uh, no one has the password to your Twitch channel, so we can't fix it, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. Plus, the vod the vods will expire on their own anyway. Um, I, I presume well, the YouTube we, stuff. Stay we there highlighted for a while. everything, so they stay forever. Mm -hmm. ah, I gotcha. So I saw someone asking earlier, like, you know, will we get one more big in-person stream? Uh, I don't think they're going to be releasing travel budget uh, to us uh, <laughs> now. No. I mean, we, and we definitely I have had very high really expectations. Um, we, we had wanted to do one this year, and then, like, Vice as a company got into a position where it was like, hey, there, there's not going to be a way to claw out the budget for, for, for travel stuff. Um, so that's why that did not happen. 
Which is too bad. Fall down the last game, right? Only one way to find out. Do you have a health bar? Do that kind of work. That kind of works. That kinda works. <clears throat> hang on, hang on. I think if I do that again, uh, <laughs> then that whole corner is going to be cleaned. Uh, one thing I always wanted to ask, Kato, was the idea between releasing pretty much every VOD without the countdown? Was that highlighting to preserve the VOD? Yes. Basically, highlighting on Twitch means that you can take whatever chunk of uh, broadcast you want, and then Twitch, for some reason, keeps highlights forever. Um, but mostly, that's how we would send it over to the YouTube afterwards. So on YouTube, there was no reason to have a 10-minute... Like, that's actually kind of killing a YouTube video to have a 10-minute... Uh, uh, Countdown. The countdown is mostly so that people have time to see the tweets and gather in chat. Yeah. Build a little bit of anticipation before the stream starts live. Little production magic uh, secrets revealed. Ooh. Behind the scenes <laughs> with Kato. Uh, did you know that it's not good to have 10 minutes of completely dead air at the start of your, your, your YouTube video? <laughs> oh, the more you know. Thanks, Martin Scorsese. You also can't say fuck within a certain amount of time. What? Fuck. We're, we're well outside the time, though, so we're good. Wait, Something what do you like, mean you can't say fuck? You can't curse within the first, uh, I believe it's 20 seconds of a video. Really? Yeah. Or they'll, like, demonetize it and or just, like, the algorithm won't push it. I had, I had never heard of that. It's because when... They, it's because they have the... If you, like, on the app... Or even on, on browser now, maybe. But you if you're scrolling, things will autoplay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and you, mm -hmm. at most, usually, people will stay on that, like, you know, 10 to 20 seconds before they click through if they're actually going to watch the whole thing. Although, I absolutely don't abide by this weird number that they've come up with which i'm sure is like how average people do that i've definitely sat down and watched an entire 10 none of these normie 10 rules minute... <laughs> i've watched a 10 minute video on autoplay <laughs> watch a fucking tom scott video on autoplay They're only like seven minutes What? <laughs> Tom Scott voice. I'm here at the firehouse. Now, see this firehouse behind me. <laughs> Uh, Slab 64, how the fuck does Tom Scott make any money putting out 7 minute videos? 10 and under is actually the preferred format. You put out enough so of wait, them. So wait, why was there this wave of YouTubers going to like 12 minute videos after years of like trying to keep it a ton? There was like, the, they, they loosened that a bit and the algorithm got a little bit wider, but still, like, it's... It's like... The most digestible form, <laughs> like... Yeah, six to seven is the me. sweet spot. No, I, I like mean I'm, I'm out here watching three hours. Twenty minute video looking at interior lighting uh, solutions. I'm watching old vods of three hours of somebody playing Netrunner online. Oh hell yeah! Solid slack. I, I don't know how to answer that question because I didn't do that. Right? Like, I just learned through needing to do it for art slash on the job slash whatever. So, I'm sure those uh, sort of cert classes, especially for like, depends on how deep you want to go into specifically things around audio engineering. Because, like, I can't, I know in theory that you can, like, 
you know, make your own XLR cables, like, replace the heads on them, like, but I don't know how to do that. There's probably a YouTube video that will teach you, you. given that, like, you can just order that. Yeah, you can just buy an XLR cable. It's not like you're just going through an XLR cable every week. Yeah, people will make their own runs of, like, XLR cables and stuff. Who do you think you are, Vinny Caravan? Yeah, that's a... Yeah. <laughs> Although, see, this is the thing, right? Like, I feel like a total fool for not, like... Having the know-how and the gear to, like, cut Ethernet cables. Because, like, just yeah. for the show, I was like... I busted out a 100-foot cable. Yeah. Because I needed, like, 65 feet of run. And... Uh, yeah. And so but now could, Yeah, but if you could just extra... simply cut that down, and then, you know, yeah. put all the little... get all the little wires into the right pins on the new head. Yeah. Easy. It'd be a dream, but I'm... But no. No. Maybe someplace clever will, like, sell a 75-foot Ethernet cable, but I did not <laughs> find that place. Ado, can you leave a 24-7 channel of repeat live streams on the Vice Machine before you leave? I'm not... And I haven't been to the office since our last in-person live stream, so no. Oh, well, so <laughs> like, like, like last time you were there was like when you and I were there playing, uh, like, motorsport? Yeah, yes. I have zero reason to go into the office, ever. Yeah, I, I really did not, yeah. I finally got a Vice ID, too. After, That's like, five years. did? Hilarious! Yeah. Why? Well, they wouldn't let me in anymore. Like, they, like it was getting increasingly tense at the check-in desk and they were like well why don't you have an ID and it's like because they never gave me an ID because they tricked them in letting me work remote um, I'm pretty sure I was Vice's first remote employee I I, I, I walked so you could run uh, wow well so I'm not sure I ever had the same deal uh, that you did Patrick um, I think you were explicitly remote mm-hmm I worked out of the LA office, and then I left That's LA. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But did anyone need to know that? <laughs> Rob Zachney is still at large, <laughs> no longer in LA, <laughs> fleeing across the country. It was like it was very. This, this is the other reason why the whole like being at Red Bull thing was very fortunate at that exact moment because like there was a kind of an expectation that like they they were gonna do a deal for Patrick Klepek. Patrick Klepek gets the you work where you want, King. None of those deals were coming to me, but I was in LA at the time, so I was like, yeah, I can totally just work out of the LA office, which was effectively like it showed how nonsensical the rule was because like you could not get more remote from the rest of the team than me being in LA. Uh, a three-hour time difference uh, in a place that like had no places you could have a quiet podcast call like that. Just they had recording booths, but nowhere to sit in them. It was just like to stand up and like do a uh, like voice session. And so the whole thing was really like, deeply nonsensical. But that was also the loophole that I was able to sort of squeeze through. Well, the the thing is, like, yes, they did a. A carve out for me, but then the company didn't know how to handle various processes, like, um, for example, paying Illinois state taxes. They're just like, we don't know. We just, we're just not going to take that stuff. We, no, I, and I, I paid New York state taxes because they just didn't even know. They just like wouldn't put in the what? HR resources what? to figure out the payroll what? stuff. Oh, I just like, said yeah, that. Totally fucked. Patrick, that's so expensive. Um, um <laughs> and uh, well, no, there's a process you can go through to like. There's a whole. It's, it's not like I just lost a bunch of money, but like basically, like okay. it was incumbent upon me. And then um, eventually, I could tell that remote had become a thing at Vice beyond me because. Uh, I got an email that's like, hey, we can collect your state taxes now. I was like, cool, thanks. Um, that's nice of you. Yes, Charlie Walnut, you can do that and then have file file forms to tell different states what taxes you paid in other yep. states. It works out. Yes, it's a... But Vi Vice was basically like, yeah, that's on you to figure out. And I'm like, cool, 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 cool. 
Alright, I need the big ladder. I need a big ladder. Weirdly enough, somehow every tax year I end up like owing a fortune to California and a fair bit to New York and then Massachusetts. It's like squared away. And it's just it's it's a weird way my taxes are calculated. It's like I pay a ton of tax to places that I don't actually live. Wait. Why? Uh the Patreon shit, I think, is the real reason for this. Oh. Weird. You just keep incorporating California for reasons, and then you end up sure, paying sure, California sure. tax forever. California tax. Nice. Probably oh, this is our biggest job yet. This is, yeah, this, this is, is huge. This, this is, is like the biggest ruling. job for the dirty boys yet. Maybe we can, like, we can tell Vice, like, uh, we can't, you can't let us go until we finish Power Wash Simulator. And that's how we save Vice, that's how we save Waypoint. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's like, sorry, we're just, it's still so dirty in here. There's a new building that's, like, super fucked up. And the dudes at Fortress are like, hang on. I know this company needs to be sold off, but, like, let the Dirty Boys cook. Oh, just to challenge the CEO to a clean-off. <laughs> Don't we have two of those right now? It may have been the moment where I started to feel like things were truly off the rails. Like, the minute our CEO disappeared... And then it was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you hear your two new dads. <laughs> and they don't want to meet you. No, dad's busy. Dad's busy. Dad's really busy. <laughs> Super busy, dad. I was like, is it good that our CEO just, like, disappeared, and then two people were just like, we couldn't pick these two other executives, we couldn't pick between them, so I don't know, they're both CEOs now. Mm-hmm, mm hmm Send us in, Rob. Let's be the CEO. Yeah. Again, yeah. if you got a mess, let the dirty boys at it. And sometimes that mess could be that you didn't sell your company. <laughs> it's wild to think there's a different path where we're Disney employees. Oh my god. Because I mean, they, they fired a bunch uh, of people down too. Like yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we're gonna. <laughs> I guess that's what I should have said. Isn't it wild and there's a different path where we were laid off by Disney instead? But uh, 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 Disney tried really hard to, to buy Vice for like a cr like two billion dollars, like a crazy amount of money. Um, I think it was like only I think it was only like a billion or so. And that hey, was that's a company really... supposedly valued at like five billion, but like mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. billion's a really funny number. Oh wait, what what am I getting? What is this? Oh. Vice is trying to sell itself for exactly a billion dollars right now? After no one buying it well, for five? I think the last number was seven hundred million. I think they're really trying really? to sell a seven hundred million dollar deal. Yikes, yeah. what? Yeah, it's and I think mean, in terms of offers that we know we're in, it's you know, a few hundred million. But yeah, it's uh it's challenging times out there. But I think that's kind of what we were talking about on the podcast, where it was like, um, I don't know what the incentives for, like, previous generations of leadership of the company were, but, like, I do suspect that some of it was just, like, once you heard that $5 billion number, your brain just, like, rotted into pieces, and you were like, that's the, that number is real, it sounds real, we, we're fools if we sell for anything less than 
than five or, or you know, if we really want to yeah. give people a discount, four billion. But it was like a really speculative uh, valuation. Like, you know, the, the you know, I feel like that first one billion dollar offer was probably your sign of where the market was. And uh, you know, you get, again, you get. But it's like, it's like Patrick. This is happening to you, I'm sure, right? Where you will have realty companies show up and be like, you know, you could sell that house for this number, and just trying to encourage you get get you to list that thing, uh, so they can do the business of like selling it. But you know, you can put any number on the sign in front of your house. Um, that doesn't mean those companies are actually capable of making sure you you get that money. We 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 I, we, I went through this recently where like you know our house has gone up you know quite a bit um not like astronaut but like relative to how a house should go up in value over six years because of the way the house market has gone it's like it shouldn't have gone up that much but it's all fake because like we like a realtor reached out to us and was like hey you know you've got a couple of kids now you know your house probably felt pretty big when you bought it now probably you know you can probably feel the squeeze on it um you know you, you know you you be in a pretty good position to to get another house and your house is worth more now and you've got equity in it and i wrote i wrote back to her like there's lots of reasons why it doesn't make sense for us right now but um i was like i know what you're saying but like whatever money i'm making uh, like yes my house is worth more but so is everybody else's house like my house ain't special and so yes my house has gone up like 70 or 80k or something like that over the last six years but I'd just be taking that money and putting it straight on the more expensive, like, like the other house that has gone up in value. So it's like, yes, do I really want a basement? Yes. I desperately, des- it's, the, it's the biggest thing about this house that I don't like, is that it doesn't have a basement. Um, but I can't afford the house that has the basement. <laughs> so I will stick with the house that I have. And it's sort of like the weird part of the housing market right now is uh, people like me are just, like, the lack of inventory is because the people who have the houses that are selling well have nothing else to buy with the houses they have. So everyone's just sitting on their house hoping for the the market to change in some way that makes it more um, uh, navigable, but... Last delinquent, how hard is it to dig a basement? So somebody asked this in the um, the racism app next door. Um, like, j- asked as a, a uh, curiosity. Uh. It was just, I'm not trying to build a basement, but are there any, like, structural engineers or people that have done work, if you wanted to, with unlimited money, like, so your house build... doesn't have... Sorry. What are your foundations? Have you been... Have... Like, just piles? What? Uh, how would you be building this? Well, no, but sorry, hang on, I may be misunderstanding. Was somebody asking, like, how do you retrofit a basement out of a house that doesn't have one? Yes. Yeah, just as, like, a, as this is a thought experiment. Like, like, can you do it? And, like, there was this person who chimed in that has done, you know, construction work and was like, look, you can technically do anything. You know, you can do anything. They're like, you do not put basements onto a house. They're like, you're starting at a hundred grand and going from there. Plus you could do all sorts of damage. It was just it was wild. I was like, yeah, like you can add you can add lots of things onto a house, but you're not gonna be adding a uh adding a basement. Right. I guess in theory you could do it if you were like going back back out, right? Like if you were like putting on a huge addition to a house and you were like digging into the ground there, I suppose in theory you could do it that way in the way that you could like dig up a pool but um i mean most of the basement is just like our house has no storage space like at all like yeah. our closets are tiny um we have two kids um the extra room in that in the house is my office um so like we have plenty of room but like we just don't have much room to put stuff anywhere and it's not like if you've listened to any of the stuff I do, it's not. I am not someone who holds on to things. So we're not exactly a family that is trying to put away a ton of crap. It's just the normal seasonal stuff and you know winter clothes and it's just there's nowhere to there's nowhere to put it. Uh, and so 
you know, I even if it was just a big unfinished basement, just a slab of concrete, I, I desperately wish I had something like that. But you know, I, I don't know. I feel like I always worry that just at some point a basement's going to flood. It doesn't have to be a big flood, you know, but like just. Yeah, and and water in a basement. Some will happen. Is, you have a lot of water in the basement, expensive. and suddenly you're tearing up carpet. Yeah, it's super expensive to fix. I mean, you guys have you an unfinished are, basement, but then like I would rather not have the basement almost because like you know it's a hellhole. Uh, people asking if I have an attic. So we have like an attic, but it's just full of. I mean, it's not like a livable space. It's a. Um, it's just a place that has what do you call it? The insulation. Like it just has insulation in it. Like it's not a place that you can go hang out in. Like uh, there's no store. We have nothing stored up there. It's it's just insulation. Excellent. Flooding is not much of a problem if you have a modern basement. Is that true, though? I, mean, I guess what they're suggesting is if your house was, was not built in, like, that... the 60s and 70s, like, whatever structural changes have been made maybe make them more resilient. Like, all the houses mm -hmm. in my area were built in, like, the early 70s. Um, I just feel like I mean, I mean, have they like do modern basements not need a sump pump? Because like, I feel like that's part of it too. Is sometimes like, sump pump is under load and like it just cuts out during the night, and you wake up and like you have a real disaster on your hands. Yeah, my my mom had uh, leaking, and she has this giant unfinished basement in in her house that. That's basically where a lot of our stuff goes. Is like when it's time for the Clupics to store something, we go, we go to my mom's house and put it in her unfinished basement. Um, and she had some, I forget exactly what the deal was, but it was water or something or other. Um, and uh, one of the kids that I grew up with, their family runs a plumbing business. And so my mom is always able to get like the friends and family discount. So she's able to get her stuff done for a little bit cheaper. And they had to, like, dig into the cement to, like, fix whatever the issue was. They tried to do all the easy stuff. None of it took. So they had to do it the hard way. And it was still, like, with the family and friends discount, like, you know, $25,000 to get it to get it fixed. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. geez. Yeah, my mom was like, yeah, the Christmas presents are going to suck this year. And I was like, all right, thanks, Mom. Good to know. Yeah. I, uh, as as a Floridian, I don't mm -hmm. know of these yeah. dark dark subway sub 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 uh basements freak me out. Sub levels freak me out because it, I've never I didn't grow up with them, and to this day I think they're they're never a good. It's never a good space. It was just like, why did you make this space this creepy hole in the ground? <laughs> Oh, you you just haven't been to a good basement, Kato. I mean, I, I, I literally haven't. I feel like. Well, by I, definition, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just. I mean, like, even I the watched, basements I I've been to here, there's maybe one good basement that I've been to, but it, and it was a finished basement, which I don't, which barely constitutes a basement. A basement is a dark, cold place where there's like maybe a boiler in a corner. Wait, in so my you're saying mind. that? So you're saying that if you. Build the underground lair, yeah, and then make it nice. You are no longer a basement anymore. It's not a, base. like basement... It's not a basement anymore. That's not what a basement is. Not not in its core identity. Rizzytron, <laughs> chat. Is your basement creepy or wet? <laughs> I mean, because I was gonna say, like, I, I watched the the draft uh, last night at my neighbor's, and yeah. they have a proper ass, and their basement is a home theater, like. That's, huge ass projector. They have a home. They have an underground seat. home theater, not a basement. <laughs> a 
a base basement to me comes with the connotations of the things you keep in a basement. It's like it's usually just storage. The fact that like all the pipes are down there. All of that means basement, not just thing underground. There's plenty of things underground that are fine. <laughs> I don't know what to do with this information, frankly. <laughs> I'm so, I, but I, 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 think this, I think this is partly a regional thing where it's like, yeah. God, how how deep is your typical Florida basement? Zero. You can't make a basement in Florida. Yeah. You cannot go underground. Okay. It is simply so. What aqua, you have aquifer. is a like almost like a crawl space. If anything, yeah, but like usually yeah, nothing. Crawl, usually see, nothing. Crawl spaces. Attics. Now, attics is attics is was was our thing, and like I mean, everyone everyone has attics. That's fine. Still bad though, you know. You've got insulation and a bunch of old things no, that you probably should have gotten rid of. <laughs> that's where the creepy dolls are. That's in the so in the cut. attic. Right? Creepy dolls are also in the basement though. They they're also they're also be in some basements. Possibly Kyle, peeking out from behind a boiler. Yeah. Where do dads, uh-huh. who are like, I just can't handle what my life has become. I need to create a wet bar down, like in a space, a space in my home. It needs to have a wet bar, a large TV, uh, sports memorabilia, and a recliner. Mm-hmm. Garage. Where does that? Where does that go? Garage. That's a garage. You're you're describing the garage what? of a man making mistakes in his life. <laughs> In Florida, like every ho- like you you need a car to survive. Every car, every house has a garage, uh, no matter what. Like it's just that's the extra space. That's where the extra space is. Wait, so I during COVID, I like I put a TV in my garage and I bought some I bought some chairs. Am yeah. I giving off divorced dad energy by <laughs> doing that? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> How often is your wife out there with you? Well, that's where we well, a lot. We that's where we were watching movies, like with group okay, during COVID. Then like, you've just made a nice entertainment space, yeah. for your family. Like we, we in the in the summer we would watch the before the vaccines we would watch movies with a group in on our deck, and then uh, uh, once we were starting vaccines and it would get cooler, we would like do it in the garage, and then eventually we moved inside, but. Yeah, like I watch football with my wife. Like she was into football before I was. So, but I, I, I know that I'm not regretting my life choices. Not all of them. Certainly not deciding to write about video games for twenty years. Like that's cool. We're we're good to go there. But I'm worrying that other people are looking at me and going that dad's got some issues. Uh, <laughs> like they're they're extrapolating your thoughts on garages and applying them to me, even though. I'm good. I think I think you can't jump to the final conclusion unless you've ever been someone's ever been over and you've been like, "This is where I go to get away from the old ball and chain," right? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's when that kicks actual, in. I should get an actual ball and chain and put it <laughs> add that as an accessory to the to the garage. Um, oh, I can't. Uh, move panda so bad, bear, so tell them. Uh, <laughs> the. Uh, the the the, ba- the basement debate was raging on. Um, uh, Kato, I'm literally sitting in a finished basement, which is a basement, a guest bedroom, a big room with a ping pong table, a bathroom. No walls are exposed. What would you call this? An underground floor? Uh, yeah, I would call it a finished basement, which is different from a basement. There's two different terms. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I don't know that it's like all like basements are ba- like I think it's that sometimes a finished basement is like basement plus. <laughs> basement plus. Base. Subscribe. Subscribe now Subscribe to basement. To- basement. Right, we're here. Why, 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 why did you reveal? Why did you reveal what our new uh, <laughs> what Patreon is going to be called? Basement, basement plus. plus. Uh, we just cover the bears and the cubs. <laughs> We can finally stop pretending to care about any other team. Y'all have a, or not y'all, but Chicago have a, a mm-hmm. hockey team. Yeah, the Blackhawks. Blackhawks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Never heard of them. <laughs> they won three they were, championships, they, but yeah, we don't they talk have, about they them much anymore. 
No, there's yeah, the mm, uh, it was uh, quite painted by uh, the, the controversy. We do not need to go over here, but yeah. they really upsetting. They you know, <laughs> very upsetting. The details are like yeah, it's like just not even worth getting into. But like they had a dynasty, like in terms of ho- in hockey terms. Yeah. Like, they, their original they won six a lot, people are people are I, yelling their original six in the chat. I've I've upset the hockey fans. I don't know what's happening. We had in Florida. Oh, we had yeah. the fucking the Florida Panthers, Florida, that famous okay. place where everyone loves to ice skate in the winters. Um, I mean they're in the playoffs, or they were. Okay, I forget. They've been beaten yet. <laughs> well, I think they. I think they drew the the Bruins, like which uh, like Tampa Bay historically good that? year. I don't remember the Tampa Bay Lightning. That might have been after I was a kid. That knew of things that sports that was happening. Tampa Bay being kind of dominant really pissed me off. I don't look. I don't like it when Florida hockey teams are good. I don't like the Florida. Like I don't like it the hockey's in Florida. Yeah, it's um, weird. It's weird. It shouldn't there's be. There's a there. lot of hockey in Florida. <laughs> I mean, we've got. Here's the thing. The real thing is that there's a shit ton of space in Florida. I mean, there wasn't really. Some of that space probably should still be wetlands to, you know, preserve the fucking environment. But there's a lot of space no. in Florida, which means you can be, build giant fucking rinks that people just what go to for fun. What can do uh, that some really big drain pipes and, uh, <laughs> like, roadways can't? God. What like, that was one of the things. That was, like... They were like the 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 big activities were go to the roller rink, go to the ice rink. Those were, were those were the spots to have birthday parties if you didn't have a pool. I could never skate. I hated those parties. I would spend my time in the arcade. To this day, um, I can't. I cannot uh, rollerblade. Blade, no, blade, or skate. Sick. Yeah. I act, I just got uh, new rollerblades uh, for Christmas because my kid is nice. really into rollerblading, and then I took her to a uh, a skate rink. Uh, she she had her birthday there um, uh, last year. And I was like, I want to ride one of these rollerblades. And I was like, you know what's sick as shit? Rollerblading. <laughs> like it's so good. It it's always like looks cool exercise. as hell. Yeah. Oh, the, the feeling of going around a turn where you're overlapping your feet like yeah. over over one yeah, another is that like that shit looks cool as hell. And it is like <laughs> it feels so cool to do. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't consider myself a particularly athletic person, but doing that is like, damn, like I'm doing something cool right now. I had the um, uh, damn, I don't even know how many years ago that was, but it's some a friend of mine had a. Roller rink birthday as adults. Uh, I thought I thought you were gonna say that you went down to somebody's finished basement and in, in there was a roller <laughs> rink. No, but I uh, they had these like basically what are look like you know like walkers but for skating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. 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 They had a bunch of them at the height for like children <laughs> and mm-hmm. like one adult one. <laughs> I was very mm-hmm. lucky that they had even one apparently. Uh, yes, those are largely meant for children <laughs> learning how to, <laughs> how to run. Really it was still, it was still pretty, even the quote-unquote adult one was still pretty short. I wasn't really standing mm-hmm, up from mm-hmm. all the way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I joke about, like, rollerblading in a house, but, like, that's, my kid learned how to rollerblade during covid in in our house wow like um a roller skate sorry not roller rollerblade um but uh well she saw like one of her friends uh roller roller skating she's like i like to roller skate I'm like roller skates are expensive like you need to prove to me that you give a shit about you know because kids are yeah you know they'll be into something for a week and so we went to play it against sports and um, is that is that, a, is that a, just a Midwest thing? Have you heard of played against sports, Cicado? I don't. That's think the sports so. stuff that's returned and being re- refurbed, right? Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah. Played against sports is like use sports equipment, and the trick of played against sports is that you go to the ones that are in the rich neighborhoods because right. rich people tend to not keep like not be rational and keep things around. Yeah, and so you can go to the played against sports in. Like rich areas, so like 
Uh, Naperville, Illinois would be a great example of a place to go to a play it again sport because those assholes are just going to toss out perfectly good brand new equipment and then you could pay half the price. Like the fucking the waypoint, the the waypoint, the 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 Goodwill in West Palm Beach, which is where all the Palm Beachers would take their extra like stuff if it wasn't gonna go on consignment, right? Like so, it was mm-hmm. like a tiered down, but it was still rich people things <laughs> because mm-hmm. yeah, they just constantly getting rid of things, very wasteful in general. <laughs> yes. Like perfectly uh, yeah, good uh, teams in your company. <laughs> I mean, Rob, my understanding is that if you're making money, that's bad. Like, you should be losing money, but have the potential to make a lot of money later. Like, just steadily making good money, that's just, I mean, who would want that? Yeah, exactly. Not exactly. fights. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I, the play it again sports story is, uh, so I went there and found these, like, $7, like, just barely held together roller skates for my kid, and she used the shit out of those for, like, two months, and I was like, alright, you've earned it, I'll go spend 60 bucks on real roller blades, you would actually <laughs> enjoy this. How are they held together? That seems, seems dangerous to me. <laughs> Uh, it's the the shape of like the actual like physical uh, shape of the the skates were not less the problem as much as like they just didn't really fit her. Ah, uh, okay. Like, yeah. They weren't really, like oh, it wasn't really. Her, she's she's very tiny. Um, uh, well, we're gonna have to pull up the list now, aren't we, Rob? Drill tower, ground floor. Oh, that's, that's, well, that's where we are. We're here. No, I know, but there's it's these are this is a stairwell thing. Oh. Oh, this was dirty. No, that way it just I'm. It's getting shiny as I wash it, but that wasn't dirty. All right, there we go. Uh, oh, sure, and could you ask Patrick what skates he got? I have no idea where to start. I actually haven't worn them yet. I got them for Christmas, but it's now just gotten warm enough to um, to wear them. Man. So uh, shoot me a DM. I will. I'm gonna wear them soon. I will. Uh, I will let you know uh, if they're any good. Door windows. Three of four. Where are the door windows? I forget, what makes what makes the thing shine? Uh, tab. So if no, you go, like you hit when, escape. Like there's one. Oh, you yeah. you click on it. You click on it. Yeah, but like, what's the door window? Door window, door window. Is it these? The garage door windows? Mm-hmm. No, it says three of four. Door window. Well, so yeah, it's like door, these door. doors that this right here, but this ain't this ain't dirty. No, that says so window. Kind of... Oh, door window. I see. Yeah, you're yeah. right. It is one of these. Got it. All right, yes. ladder. Two spotlights, vent. Lights. There's the other vents. Spotlight, aha. Uh-huh. One spotlights. Uh, I'm getting those now. So if you want to look for the vent. All right, spotlights done. Vent is it. Found one vent. (laughs) 
Here we go. Pat, this vent was filthy. I can't believe you just walked right by it. Ding! Hey! Hey! Look at this a fire station. This is all clean. Hey! hey. We did hey. it! Uh, we did it. We have proved our worth. Um, Were we watching we have... that fire station for like two hours? Yeah! Maybe they should have laid us off. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys do today? After two Big hours of station, watching a pretend fire station, one must concede. They may have had a point. <laughs> well, that'll do it for uh, Waypoint today. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> you could have uh, just stopped at Waypoint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That'll do it. Uh, uh, we'll be back next week with speaking. more stuff. What? Um... Your hand is just shaking, like the character model. Your hand is just shaking. Stop spraying. Uh, Look, it's like you... Like, are you cool? Are you okay? <laughs> are you alright? <laughs> uh, I'm anyway, sorry. Take take us out. Take us out. There's a podcast up. Go listen to that. We answer some of your right questions. We, you know, Some of the stuff we went over here is in the podcast. Um, yeah. We need to have a meeting on Monday that's like... What are we doing for the next month? Like a like a strategy of like what exactly we're gonna get up to. Um, probably won't be doing. I'll probably be two. here Monday. <laughs> well, <laughs> th- we covered that in the podcast, didn't we? Kind of. I mean, that's not. That's not. Uh, a, yeah, that's in there. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, as of right now, Rob will be here on Monday, and then we'll see what Monday Rob feels like. Um, but. Um, uh yeah, like we'll still be doing some po- like we gotta talk about Jedi Survivor. Like I just don't expect yeah. less. Um, not nothing, <laughs> but expect, expect less. Way less point. Way points. less point. Way less point. Um, but we'll still be doing some stuff. Um, just because, I mean, we enjoy doing it, right? Like in theory, we don't have to do anything. But like, I don't know. We you know you y- y'all paid, and we want to you know do some some fun stuff for you and. We got to kind of figure out what exactly that's going to be, but um, we'll report back with more soon. Oh, was that the sign off? Is that goodbye? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>